Welcome back to another edition of Viper Bites, and we have a nice little series going on here in which throughout the offseason, we're going to look at players that you must stash heading into 2022 and beyond for Dynasty Football. And today we are going to turn our attention to the tight end position, and we're going to look at Houston Texan tight end Brevin Jordan, six foot three. 245 pounds, 21 years old, out of the University of Miami. Now look, at the University of Miami, three seasons, 105 receptions, 358 yards, 13 touchdowns. He was a touchdown-making machine down there. Rookie season right now with the Texans, 19 receptions, 169 yards, three touchdowns, and an 8.9 yards per reception. That's throughout the season. But what's even more telling is what's been happening as of late, as we wind down this 2021 campaign. Now, look, Houston, they have many holes that they need to address in the draft, and the tight end position is not a high priority for them, which is good news for Brevin Jordan. Now, looking at this tight end room in the Texans, it's not hard to think that Jordan can't become the featured guy for this team. Look, Farrell Brown, eh. Jordan Atkins, eh. His, his last season at Miami, we saw Brevin Jordan record 38 receptions, 576 yards and seven touchdowns for those Hurricanes. Now, Jordan was my tight end three when we're talking about the rookie draft, this rookie class that just came by, the Pratt Fraermuth, the Kyle Pitts. And you know what? Jordan, he showed a ton of athleticism during his college days and in his limited opportunity so far this season has shown the same. Now, the Texans brass... Everything he's done has certainly not gone unnoticed. You talk about his skills and his maturation as the season has progressed, check mark. Now, even when Farrell Brown returned from his injury, it was Jordan Atkins. That was a healthy scratch. The Texans have been scheming up some plays as of late in the season here to create one-on-one -on -one matchups for Brevin Jordan and have occasionally split him out a wide on multiple uh, occasions there. Just kind of get that, give him some more opportunities. Now, which I absolutely love as a fantasy manager. Give me a big athletic tight end who's getting opportunity schemed for him. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. Now, when we look at some of these other things that Brevin Jordan's been improving on as the season has gone on, his playing strength. His playing strength, going from a rookie to a man, by the time you're in 17, 18 games of the season, you are no longer a rookie. And that has been seen in his ability to block and be a willing participant in the blocking game as far as the run is concerned. Now, they're going to continue the Texans to evaluate this team moving forward. These next few weeks as the season concludes are going to be huge for guys like Brevin Jordan who are looking to make an impact that lasts throughout the offseason, throughout the draft process, and into the 2021 training or 2022 training camps. Now, also, which was kind of a surprise to many, was back in week number 11, it was Brevin Jordan who was named the surprise starter over Jordan Atkins when Atkins was healthy and available. So that's just something that kind of tells you that, you know what, the Texans really believe in what they have in young Brevin Jordan. Now, during weeks 12 through 16, Jordan has shown that potential. This is what I'm talking about right now for fantasy managers, that optimism heading into 2022. In that period, 12 through 16, and he missed week number 15, okay? So we've got a four-game sample size here in which he put up 13 receptions on 18 targets. He produced 112 yards, and two of his three touchdowns came over that four-game span. Now, it was over this four-game period in which we're heading into week number 17 in which we saw Brevin Jordan put up nine or more fantasy points in three of those four contests. If it wasn't for his absence in week number 15, Jordan would have seen at least his fantasy positioning much higher than tight end 17 over that period. As his 9.1 fantasy points per game, that has him sitting 16th behind Zach Ertz and ahead of the likes of Mike Gusecki, Evan Ingram, and Noah Fant. Now the Texans, they will have a full allotment of draft picks heading into 2022, including for the first time since 2019, their own first round pick. I mentioned the quarterback position, Davis Mills, Tyrod Taylor, definitely an option here to be looking for an upgrade there. Running back, you're looking at David Johnson, Rex Burkhead. There's maybe a draft pick being used there. Wide receivers, Brandon Cooks, Nico Collins. Those are your 1A, 1B type guys for the Texans. Not exactly guys I'd be too worried about cutting into Brevin Jordan's production later on. Well, maybe Brandon Cooks, but Nico Collins, Brevin Jordan are one and the same in my opinion as far as how the targets will be dispersed in 2022. Now, we haven't even gone into what they need to fix on their offensive line or what they need to fix on their defense. So, like I said earlier on in this video, 
I have no doubt that Brevin Jordan will be the guy and very little competition for that top spot in the tight end room come 2022. And you know what? Volume and opportunity, that is key, especially when you talk about a young pass-catching tight end in today's day and age. And we'll talk about that tight end landscape or wasteland, if, if you will, in a minute. Now, we often forget about Brevin Jordan, what he's able to do coming in from this draft class behind guys like Kyle Pitts, behind guys like Pat Fairmuth. These guys have kind of taken on and moved on this season and have been productive throughout. Now, there's optimism for me to believe that there's no reason not to believe that Brevin Jordan can't be a top 12 to 15 tight end as soon as next year. You're talking about a 21-year-old who is now going to be taking over the top spot in this Texans offense for the tight end position and possibly even the number two pass catcher for this team moving forward. Now, you combine that, that optimism with that potential volume, that usually leads to good things, especially for dynasty purposes. Now, in short, listen, being big and athletic and being willing to block and being a willing participant in that run game and making the most of those opportunities, that leads to big things. That leads to you being on the field. That leads to you being available. And when we talk about this tight end landscape and this wasteland that is, we just mentioned some good players, Gusecki, Fant, Ingram, that have not been good this year. Sometimes your best availability or your best ability is your availability. And I often get that kind of mixed up there when I talk about that, but think about that. If you are available, you have the ability to do some big things. And for me, Brevin Jordan is going to have that availability, that opportunity, and he's going to do some big things in 2022 and for your dynasty franchises moving forward. With that being said, stay tuned. we got plenty more of these dynasty stash videos coming at you throughout the offseason. Not to mention, we are concluding our primetime previews here. We've got the Packers. We've got the Vikings. We've got the Browns. we got the Steelers. We're going to talk about that here later this week. So stay tuned for those as they come at you each and every time. Head over to FantasyPoints.com. And you know what? Get that one-stop shop for all your primers, all your dynasty rosters, because you're definitely going to want to get that subscription today. And, of course, head over to the Vipers Network on YouTube or listen to us on any kind of podcasting platform, whether it be Apple, Spotify, Anchor. Hit that rate, hit that review, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. We'll catch you later. Bye.